Hey everyone, Charles Judd here, and in this video, I'm going to look at the 1.3D topic of EIGRP load balancing. Load balancing allows us to make use of the available bandwidth on our redundant links, rather than just having those sit idle waiting for a failure. I'll look at equal and unequal cost load balancing, and I'll examine the EIGRP add path feature for use with dynamic multipoint VPN. So if we look at the topology that we're working with, we'll see three interconnected routers, and all of these are participating in EIGRP. If we go here on router one and take a look at our EIGRP topology table, we're gonna notice that we see the 23.23.23.0 network, and we're told that we have two successors. Successor routes are the best path to a network, and we see two of those here because our metrics are exactly the same, or in other words, our feasible distances are equal. We can get to that network through either R2 or R3. And in fact, if we say trace route 23.23.23.1, we're gonna see two different first hops listed here. We see one at 12.12.12.2 and one at 13.13.13.2. So we see one path going through R2 and another path going through R3. If we say show IP route, you're gonna see in our routing table that we have both routes listed here for our 23.23.23.0 network. So with EIGRP, by default, equal cost routes will be installed into the routing table for load balancing. And in fact, most IGPs will do the same thing for two or more paths that have the same metric. So let's take a look at how we can actually see this in action in a debug output. Now we will need to do a couple of unusual things first. First, we need to disable Ceph, which is Cisco Express Forwarding. Now obviously we would never want to do this on a production network, but in this lab environment, this is going to allow us to see the load balancing at a packet level in our debug output. So we can do that by saying no IP Ceph. We also need to disable route caching so that these packets are processed individually in order to see this effect. So let's say interface range gig zero slash zero through one, and then we'll say no IP route hyphen cache to disable that. Just to make our debug output less verbose, let's create an access list to identify our ICMP traffic. So let's say access hyphen list, I'll make this ACL 100, I'll say permit, ICMP, any, any, echo. Now we can enable debugging using this ACL. Let's back up a level and let's say debug IP packet and we can say 100 and you'll see that IP packet debugging is now on for traffic that's matched to ACL 100. So now let's ping 23.23.23.1 23 and we're gonna see in our debug output we're having some load balancing happening. You'll notice that we're bouncing back and forth between using gig zero slash zero and gig zero slash one. It continues to bounce between those interfaces. We can see that we're using the 12.12.12.1 interface locally, followed by the 13.13.13.1 interface locally, and it continues to alternate between those to load balance our packets. I mentioned that this is the default EIGRP behavior, and by default, the maximum number of equal cost routes that will be installed into the routing table is four. And we can change this number by going under our EIGRP instance. So in my case, I would say router EIGRP one, and the command for that is maximum hyphen paths. And if we look at contextual help, you'll see that we can set that from one to 32. And by the way, if we set that to a value of one, that will disable equal cost load balancing completely. We can also perform unequal cost load balancing through the variance option in EIGRP. Now, in order to perform unequal cost load balancing using multiple routes that do not have the same distance, it's important to note that only feasible successor routes will be considered for unequal cost load balancing. So this means that obviously the route must meet our EIGRP feasibility condition. So what we're gonna do here, let's go under interface gig zero slash one, which is the interface that's connecting us to R3, and let's artificially influence our feasible distance by saying bandwidth, and I'm gonna set that to 100,000. So now this is mimicking a 100 meg interface. If I break out of here and say show IP, EIGRP topology, 
you'll notice that now we still see our 23.23.23.0 slash 30 network, but this time we're told that we only have one successor, or in other words, we only have one best path to this network. If we say show IP route, we're gonna see that now this network is only available over the 12.12.12.2 interface, which is router two. Remember that only a feasible successor route can be considered for unequal cost load balancing. So if we scroll back up a bit to our EIGRP topology table, we can check to see if this is going to be considered a feasible successor. And for the link going over to R3, which is gig zero slash one, we see the reported distance is less than the feasible distance for our successor route, which means that this does meet the feasibility requirement and it can be considered for unequal load balancing. So to do this, we need to configure our variance multiplier. So the way this variance multiplier works is we're trying to create a situation where the feasible distance of the feasible successor is less than the successor routes feasible distance multiplied by our variance value. So for example, if the feasible distance of our successor route was 15 and the feasible distance of the feasible successor route was 50. This means our variance multiplier would need to be at least four in order to give our successor route a feasible distance that is greater than that of the feasible successor. So if we scroll back up and look at our EIGRP topology table, you'll see that at the top, our successor route, the feasible distance of that is 3072. You can see that the feasible distance of the feasible successor route is 26,112. And so to figure our variance multiplier, we would simply divide 3072 into 26,112. In other words, we would divide our feasible successor feasible distance by our successor's feasible distance. If we do that division, we get the decimal number 8.5. So if we multiply 3072 by 8.5, that gives us the number 26,112. So in order to make our feasible distance of our successor route less than the feasible distance of the feasible successor route, this means that our variance multiplier needs to be at least 8.5. In my case, I'm just gonna set that to nine. So let's scroll back down to our configuration and we do this under router EIGRP configuration mode. So I will say router EIGRP one in my case, and we can use the keyword variance. And here you can see that we're able to set that variance multiplier between one and 128. We've already indicated that I want to set that to nine. So I'll put nine and hit enter. Let's break out of here and I'll say show IP EIGRP topology. And you'll see that once again, we have two successors listed for the route to this network. If I say show IP route 23.23.23.1, this is going to give us insight into how that load balancing happens. We can see that by our traffic share count. You'll see we have two of those listed. We have one for gig zero slash one, where the traffic share count is listed as seven. And for gig zero slash zero, you see the traffic share count is listed as 60. So what this is basically saying is for every 67 packets routed to this network, 60 of those are gonna go over gig zero slash zero, which is R2, and that's because that is our faster link, by the way, and seven of those would go over gig zero slash one using R3. And if we ran another ping command with a really high repeat count, we would actually see this played out in our debug output. We've moved to a different topology here. I have a single hub DMVPN configured using EIGRP. The EIGRP add path feature is used with EIGRP and single hub DMVPNs to provide multiple best paths to connected spokes. There are a few prerequisites to mention for using this, first being that this is only supported in EIGRP named configuration mode. Also, the variance feature that we just looked at should not be configured when this is enabled because this will alter the EIGRP metrics for load balancing and can interfere with this configuration. And finally, we need to make sure that we disable the next hop self feature on the DMVPN hub, which is enabled by default with EIGRP. If we jump on R1 and say show DMVPN, 
we can see our three DMVPN tunnels formed between R1 and our three routers. You can see our tunnels are using the 172.16.0.0 slash 24 address space. If we jump over to R2 and let's ping 172.16.0.3, which is R3's tunnel interface, we do have success there. If we say trace routes to the same IP address, we'll see that the first hop goes directly from R2 to the tunnel interface on R3. If we say show IP NHRP, we're gonna see a few tunnels listed here. We see our static tunnel that we've configured, and we're gonna see some dynamic tunnels. These are dynamic tunnels that have formed because of our communication between our spoke sites, which is exactly what we would expect to see with a functioning DMVPN configuration. If we go back to R1 and I say show IP route EIGRP, we'll see that we have learned two routes to the 192.168.0.0 network through EIGRP, which we would expect. You can see in the topology that R2 and R3 are both connected to this shared segment. So we have two paths and our metrics are identical here. Both paths going over our tunnel zero interface on router one. If we go to R4 and do the same thing, show IP route EIGRP, we're gonna see a bit of a different story on R4. From here, we only see a single path available, which is pointing us over 172.16.0.2, which is router two. In EIGRP with a single hub DMVPN, when the hub has more than one path going out to the same network with the same metric, but using different spokes, only one of those paths is going to be advertised. We can use our add path feature to advertise up to four additional best paths, which allows for load balancing and path redundancy. So let's look at how we can do this. Back on R1, which is our hub router, let's go under router EIGRP lab, which is the name of my EIGRP named instance. We want to say address hyphen family, IP version four, autonomous hyphen system one. And we want to go under our address family interface. And we want to choose tunnel zero, which is our DMVPN tunnel interface. So first let's say no next hyphen hop hyphen self, which is one of our prerequisites and we can say add paths. And if we take a look at contextual help, you'll see that we can add up to four additional paths. We can configure from one to four. So if I say one here, that's going to allow for one additional path. Let's do that and let's go to R4. You'll notice that we had a resync. We had a graceful restart happen with our EIGRP. That's completely expected. So now if we again say show IP route EIGRP, we now have awareness of both paths to this shared segment. You'll see that the first one is the tunnel interface for router three, and the second one is the tunnel interface for router two. So that's a look at some EIGRP load balancing mechanisms. I hope you found this content useful, and I wanna thank you sincerely for watching.